You probably already know Instamat. We've covered it on the channel many times, most recently when we looked at their 2025 update, which introduced features no other texturing software currently offers, such as mesh and sub-mesh masks. Today we're going to be focusing on another major part of Instamat, the material layering workspace. This is a dedicated environment built directly into the software, where you can mix, blend, and create complex materials using a massive procedural materials library, along with built-in masks, filters, brushes, and decals. So in this video, we're going to take a closer look at how powerful this system really is. When you create a new Instamat project, you will find the material layer in workspace right under asset texturing. You can start from a blank project or use a template. The layout is quite similar to the asset texturing workspace. A 3D viewport in the center, tools and settings on both sides. On the left, you get the math library, project editor, package manager, and viewport settings. On the right is the layering tab, where all the magic happens. And what makes this material mixer stand out is Instamat's huge collection of 1100 procedural materials which include wood, dirt, asphalt, paving, you name it. In addition to a large set of filters, also generators, brushes and masks. By simply tweaking parameters and randomizing seeds, you can create endless variations in just seconds, stack materials and even bring in your own materials which you previously created in Instamat. This makes it incredibly easy for beginners and intermediate artists to create high-quality materials quickly and export them to any DCC software. So let's put it to the test. I want a post-apocalyptic asphalt surface with cracks, potholes, agent effects, and so on. Searching asphalt gives me several options, each with multiple parameter controls. Take this as an example. It has cracks, patches, potholes, markings, dust, etc. This alone is impressive. But we can push it even further. Adding a dirt layer on top will make it look sick, but the colors don't match. Easy. You can drop in a color match filter and use the previous layer as the color target. Now tweak the opacity until you get better blending. But what if we want the dirt only on the surface? Add a mesh mask builder. Use the ambient occlusion mask to define the areas you want to cover. And you can click as to isolate the mask so you can see what you're doing. Adding a grunge texture to add more details, and we are done. The possibilities stack up quickly. I only used one mask and one filter. Keep in mind that there are many more. Talking about every single one of them will take forever. So you should check the documentation for more information. And you can add as many layers as you want. Use brushes and decals, group layers, create a multi-channel layer from scratch, and choose the maps you want to use. Everything is possible. Once you are happy with the result, Right-click any parameter to expose it in the project editor, so you can tweak it later. Then save the whole thing as a material in your user library, or export it as a PBR texture set. I was able to create this material in just a few minutes, and when I think about it, we've all had times when we searched for materials but couldn't find exactly what we wanted, and I think this can fix the issue. For beginners and intermediate artists, having access to a library with over 1100 procedural materials makes the texturing process dramatically easier. There is even a free license for private use, and you can get yourself 50% off on all tiers this Black Friday, which is December 2nd, by clicking the link in the description down below. And there you have it guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to the channel to receive new and informative videos like these. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.